this is going? Oh, I think it is. All right, this is a different kind of video today. Um, I'm actually in a discussion um, on an online correspondence uh, regarding there's a certain um, bell in um, um, in Oxford's um, physics lab, and it has a what they say it's a dry uh, uh, dry pile uh, type of um, power source, and it has a bell ringing back and forth. Uh, it doesn't really ring. It just touches back and forth on a bell. It's been going for almost 150 years. Um, that might raise some questions for some people that understand the idea of uh, energy density and a power supply. Even assuming 100% um, efficiency likely should not be running for 150 years, especially when they are uh, smaller than these like cans. Uh, but the, the issue is, is that no one's allowed to touch it, dismantle it, figure out how it works but it's been going back and forth steadily for 150 years. It doesn't have an audible ring um, and um, it doesn't go. But the thing is to me, it seems very likely it's working on an outside static field um, that's continuously powering it. Um, not unlike this simple setup of uh, Franklin's bells, which is an experiment where if one side becomes charged, the conductive ball with the insulating string um, will deliver the charge to the other can to balance the two charges depending on the space between these gaps. And so these are also insulated from the table and from ground. And just from charging up a balloon like this, you can kind of see, let's get more charge, but they will go back and forth just based on the charge that's being delivered to it from the balloon itself. It's trying to balance this charge. Um, I don't quite, if I ever recall, um, um, hair wants, human hair wants to be positively charged. So by rubbing it like this, I should be giving the balloon a negative charge. And it's then passing that negative charge to the can, which is then trying to deliver the negative charge to the other can by creating equil equilibrium between these conductors. So because the, <laughs> my dog's playing with a squeak toy. Um, because the charges want to be equal between these two areas with the gap that's uh, close enough for the charge to be delivered or at least attract the uh, conductor in the middle. It attracts the conductor, the conductor receives the charge and then delivers it to the other side. And this will go back and forth until there's an equilibrium where there's not enough uh, attractive force. So that will keep going. So this is the thing, it's under glass. So I have here a microwave panel. This is glass that's usually typically found in the microwave. And just showing that when you place this glass between here, let me just see. Is that you with us? You're still going to get a charge. So it doesn't matter that this thing in Oxford is covering glass. It's just the fact that um, the electrostatic force is doesn't care. So one of the proposals that I had to see if I can confirm this is whether or not a Faraday cage can um, take charge away um, from the system. Because the thing is, is that because you have glass, um, charges are not going to go through this. But what's going to happen is that charges are going to be attracted to both sides. So if charges are attracted to both sides, it creates kind of like a, a vacuum of charge. Does that make sense? So you have a charge on one side, a charge on the other, and this attracts charges on the can will be attracted to the surface of the glass, creating an uh, equilibrium issue between the two cans. So you have the same reaction, even if there's glass between me and the uh, static source. So because it's like a capacitor, it's like static on this side, static on that side, pulling on this side, it's like a, it's like a chain reaction. So it doesn't matter if that thing in Oxford has glass around it, it's still susceptible to static forces. So what I propose is to see if a Faraday cage can do that. I could, probably should do that here to see if it works. So I don't, a Faraday cage should ground charge um, around them, you know, we have a, some sort of uh, metal container placed on top of it and that's grounded. It should um, create a uh, charge disparity where it wouldn't, um, that um, it should reach its same equilibrium around the glass, which I think is the source of its um, power of how it's going back and forth for the last 150 years. It's basically just um, random static discharge, which is this being bounced between the two dry piles. Not because the dry piles have stored energy from 150 years ago, it's because energy is being added to the system, and that's why it keeps going. So this is a little different video from usual, um, and I might be wrong in some of my explanations, but I think my theory is correct. 
that it's receiving outside source from static fields, um, regardless of how my um, explanation uh, may be flawed. Um, some, of the, some of you that have um, uh, formal education in physics likely will be able to correct me, but I'm pretty sure it's receiving outside energy um, to its system, which is allowing it to um, keep going for that long. Anyway, share your thoughts below. Oh, and uh, subscribe, ring that bell. I don't know. I just like sharing things. Um, I'm a weird guy. Um, one of these days, I'm going to make a product. I'm actually going to be contacting a few um, mining companies. That's what I'm basically going to at this point because I think um, uh, it's probably the only way that I'm going to get real recognition for uh, my piezoelectric theory is getting people in the industry that care about it. <laughs> Because I don't seem to, I don't seem to be generating in, um, much interest in the uh, the idea of cutting rock with electricity. Anyway, have a good one.